All right, welcome everybody to today's Voc Talk Cafe. My name's Robin. I am the Provincial Vocational Training Education Consultant with Proceed. And I'm here to, to co-host the today's Voc Talk Cafe, which is going to be all about uh, project-based learning in professional cooking. Let's go ahead and start a Voc Talk Cafe by Après Coup. And this is a space where we chat live about teaching a trade in today's world. Now, on the website for Les Après Cours FP, uh, we have the previous meetings recording. So any of the previous episodes, uh, uh, last week, for example, was on uh, AR and welding. Uh, you can vision all of our, our previous episodes. Uh, there's also the, our, all of our collaborative documents. So we have the meeting agenda, the minutes and the summary. We have the archives from previous years. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> We have the tutorial on how to add the, the community meeting schedule to your calendar. Uh, we have our attendance record and we have the library of shared resources. So in each individual group, there's all that in there. So make sure you're going to the website to get our get the information. After that, a word about this project. Remember, this is a pilot project and it's really important for you to create your space. So feel free to speak up. Everything you want to say is worth listening to. It's about us creating a space to talk about the trades. So today, September 18th, we are going to be talking about project-based learning in professional cooking. So the secret is in the sauce. Now, today's goals. We would like to define a little bit project-based learning. We want to explore some of the key connections between these definitions and these elements and so that we live inside a training world, inside this education world and workforce situations. And we want to some, discover some of the examples of project-based learning in professional cooking. So some that have actually been done before and some that are just pies in the sky ideas that haven't been done. But if anybody really wants to, that would be great to see them. The session breakdown. So the session's always broken down into two parts. We have a 15, 10 to 15 minute presentation on a theme topic. And then we have a 45 minute interactive element where we're gonna discuss uh, some of the things that we're thinking about. We're gonna uh, open, we have some an open mic where we can ask questions, answer questions, give comments, participate. And then we also have the technology and teaching inspiration capsule. All right, so let's start project-based learning. So what is project-based learning? Project-based learning is, it's really a student-centered, uh, uh, it's a student-centered pedagogical practice. And it's something where the students really are contributing to uh, the outcome, the, the, the whatever's being designed and have a distinct say inside the, the, the pieces. Uh, it's, it gets a lot of talk in the education sectors because I think that inside uh, academic learning and the education side, it, like, would, they're always trying to come up with real world examples. And so all this theory that the students are learning or all this these concepts, it's like, well, how do I apply those in the real world? And so the project is about creating a real world example where you can apply these, these notions. For us in VT, our world is real. <laughs> like we do have some concepts, but most of our world is real. So this is sort of a natural partner for us. But what makes like what makes it a little bit different than just like our regular activities is the, the student implication in which the student, it really is about the teacher setting up a learning environment, but the students have a direct say in that learning process. So they are going to be part of it. I mean, the teacher is going to ensure an outcome. They have a goal in mind, but the, the students really are going to help set how they're going to get to that goal. It also follows a structure of like identifying a problem, collaborating to come up with a solution path, including designing and prototyping, um, getting feedback from peers or other people like instructors or, or, or uh, experts, and then modifying the design to, to, to incorporate this feedback. So it really mirrors projects in the real world where none of us are kind of working on our own. So what makes this especially important in, in vocational training is because a lot of those principles are encompassing uh, andragogical principles. And the andragogical principles of 
you know, it's an adult learner and they have experience to draw from. And when we're dealing with projects, they can contribute a lot from their personal experience. Um, adult learners are also really interested in uh, ideas that solve problems that they're faced with. So as a worker in the workforce, how do it? It's not so much about cooking food. It's how do I get my, 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 my work colleagues to cook food with me and adhere to a standard that we can all agree on, right? So it's, 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 it's this idea that, that those are part of the problems you're going to encounter in the workforce. And I want to, I want to practice that in school. And they're also, adult learners are very interested in applied information. So this isn't just about cooking techniques that I'm not, that, that are great to know and are fantastic, but applying them in a real world, it's also about making sure that we're going to understand the real world situation that they're going to be in. And I, I'm going to make something up here, but let's say like in, 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 in school, in, in, a, in a vocational training center, you're going to have access to certain equipment that in the real world, you might not have access to. So a project could go and, and, and mimic that to, to be able to apply it to, 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 um, to real world situation. So, um, so this notion of andragogical principles is really tight in project-based learning. And when we look at it, so why is it good for students? It's good for students because it really helps them build this capacity to work through problems. Because they're heavily implicated, these aren't these aren't problems that are not that are, that 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 are just theoretical and have no reason to be there. These are problems that 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 will help move their vision forward and their project forward. Because it uses their prior knowledge, there's a sense of, of, of value to personal experience and what people can bring to a situation that is a lot of the times a crossover from not necessarily directly related to the trade skill, but personal experience they've had before. So it adds this value to whatever my lived experience is. And it also helps students build resilience as they struggle through the learning process. Resilience because yes, they are part of the process and they do have a say in it, but resilience because we're all doing this together. It's a collaborative thing. And so from this, let's take a look at some of, uh, some of the examples that, that we've done and uh, that I've done in professional cooking. And I'm gonna ask some of my colleagues to chime in here, but so for example, um, one of the a couple of the the projects that I've done was um, there was a project I did on culinary cultures and religion because what I found was that since I had such a large body of students coming from abroad, when they were entering into the workforce for during their 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 first their initial stage during their initial apprenticeship, they were being exposed to kitchens where dietary habits due to religious beliefs were actually quite prevalent. And because they weren't that familiar with them, they really didn't understand what was going on. And it sort of thought, hmm, okay, well, how can I develop a project that, that would help them understand not the religion itself, but the dietary habits and the role of dietary habits in the food world? And so this one, if I just X out, I can show you here. And I guess I forgot to mention before the idea of projects, it's uh, projects don't have to be huge. <laughs> the notion of project-based learning is it can be little snippets of things that the, 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 really the idea behind projects, project-based learning is, is that the student is part of the solution is their help designing that solution. So this was an activity here where we did, where I presented a few different uh, world religions and it was the students themselves that had to do a little bit of research and figure out which religions they wanted to research. And then they had to come together and say, okay, well, how are we gonna create uh, um, a little guide for our colleagues for the religion that we're working on? And so they would, they would each group would decide whether or not they were doing a, a presentation or if they were doing a little, uh, one of the groups came up with like a little hockey card that somebody could print out. Like they came up with different solutions. And so this project here was just to get students to understand the role that, that uh, dietary habits have in, 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 in religions. Um, so this is one project. Uh, the, another project I did was my project that I call Eat More Beets. And Eat More Beets, I developed, uh, it was a project we did in recipe development, 
whereby, and those are actually the pictures that you see here, recipe development and, and recipe standardization are two competencies in the advanced program where the student has to learn how to write a recipe and standardize a recipe. And so what we had done here is we developed a project where we were working with a farmer and we were receiving a market basket every week. And so our project here was that the farmer said, okay, I have a lot of beets and I wanna hire somebody to, I wanna hire a recipe developer to create uh, recipes that promote my beautiful beets. And so the students then had to come up with, uh, they had to come up with the way that they were gonna share the recipe. They had to come up with, they had to interview the, the, the farmer so that they could find out well, exactly what are the parameters. They had, anyway, this, there were a few things associated with this. And then at the end, you can see they went to the market and with their recipes, they handed them out to, to, to the clients <laughs> in, the, in, in the real world and they were able to share their, their beet recipes. So that was another project that we did. And then a final one that we did was uh, that I did with students is where uh, I had them evaluate commercial food products to be able to incorporate into into a menu in menu du jour. So once again, we had our menu du jour, which is one of our first service competencies. And this one I had we wanted to uh, I brought out the idea that often in in the real world, uh, in kitchens in the real world, we're going to be using commercial products. Uh, some kitchens will make ice cream, but most of them are going to purchase it. Some kitchens will cut their fries. Most of them are going to buy frozen fries. So in those two examples, the ice cream and the frozen fries, I said, we have to figure out which one we're going to put on the menu. So the project I designed was that, okay, you guys are going to have to figure out well, which fries are we going to buy and which ones are we going to test? And how are you going to, how are we going to decide which one we go for? Is it going to be uh, unanimous? Is it going to be a small group that decides how are we going to do this? And so they had to come up with the parameters of the testing of the, uh, of, of the products and then deciding how they were going to put them on the menu. Was it going to be strictly taste? Was it going to be cost? What was, what was going to be the deciding factors? So that, that was also a, a, a fun activity. So those are uh, some examples of activities that uh, project-based learning that, that I've done with students. Uh, these are examples that I didn't do personally, but some of my work colleagues did, where um, one of the projects was the Clean the Freezer project, where um, the students were presented with fro a freezer full of product, and they had to figure out how to make wholesome food okay because like let's let's be clear this is there was some stuff that definitely went into the garbage but uh the students had to come up with the 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 solution to um uh, having all this food that they had to thaw out and then work and turn into food pro uh, tune into products that they could sell in the store so that was a, a project that was done by uh, a colleague and another colleague that worked on a cookbook uh, Mark, do you want to talk about the cookbook a little bit? Do you feel like jumping in or? Um, I'm, I was planning on talking about it more in the discussion part because I don't okay. want to keep too much time for the presentation. But okay. um, yeah, the students and I did a cookbook <laughs> instead of just like doing the recipes and and checking them out but i'll i'll bring more details in the conversation later okay but that's another example of a project that a colleague did where it's not really in the program of study to make a cookbook but by turning those recipes into a, a cookbook or a magazine or something that makes it more of a real world application but then the students had to deal with you know well all kinds of parameters and mark will go into that later and then uh, another example, this is actually a project that I built a long time ago that I've never been able to do and I'm dying to do, um, but it's my project Food for the Soul, which, which would be a collaborative project actually between the healthcare sectors and the, the food sector. And it would be developing culturally specific recipes for patients that are in palliative care. So this would be a situation where it would be a project for both the nursing, the assistant nursing and home care students and the cooking students, whereby each would be bringing strengths to the table, but learning from each other and developing something that both worlds could use. So that I've built and I've never been able to put it into action, but I think that would be a fantastic project. So there's some examples of, of, um, uh, of other projects. So in our key takeaways about project-based learning, 
Project-based learning is really about student-centered learning. The student is at the center of the learning and they actually have a say. The student voice is important and the decisions they make will help guide the project. And this makes it uh, that project-based learning encompasses those andragogical principles of students have uh, experience to draw from, they're looking for applied information and they're looking for information that solves problems. And that these projects that that you that I that I outlined here, these are common in the trade. These are not specific learning projects. This is stuff that actually goes on in the cooking world, developing recipes for people, uh, uh, understanding dietary habits, building cookbooks. <laughs> like this is all stuff that goes on in the real world. Um, so this it's a very common way for us in professional cooking to um, to exercise our trade. So with that, that's the end of our presentation and our recording. So after this uh, super interesting conversation, I like to bring up a, a, a quick notion of uh, how technology can help in the in the context that we've uh, dis discussed. And I, I wanted to bring up the idea to use tools collaborative most of the time but not necessarily depending on the nature of the project that can support keep track of traces of what's been done and how it's been done if you want to uh, aggregate students work or their research you uh, you can use post-it notes either on the padlet or on a, a jamboard if you're on a google platform um, to or get everybody involved in the conceptualization, the research, the ideation at the beginning of the project or in the wrap up at the end, you can build a mind map together. Uh, Miro is a good platform to do that. You can, um, if you wanna use more uh, complicated, uh, sophisticated uh, ap applications like Microsoft Publisher, that's what I did for the recipe book that uh, we talked about earlier. Um, you need to provide a template to the students because if you try to copy paste everything yourself, you're going to go nuts. I know I tried. <laughs> and um, uh, it might be a good idea also to podcast or to a, uh, uh, shared sites to share the work of the students uh, with the entire world wide web. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I can see lots of uh, lots of I lots of incorporation of technology here, and also like the thing with project based learning, especially for us VT, uh, those of us in vocational training, it's a direct link to a portfolio, a portfolio where the student is, is showcasing the work that they did at color at, at school, and in this case, at culinary school. So I can really see how these tech tools here would be a huge bonus to that. Um, okay. Any questions? We don't have any questions at this point. So to continue the discussion, go to vt.proceed.ca. Uh, go ahead and go to the professional cooking or food and beverage or pastry departments. Continue this discussion. We also post the summary on the blog. And if you need a hand, just click on the little chat button. And with that, we'll skip the exit ticket. Thanks for coming. The next Voktok Cafe. Oh, I didn't even write my date. The next Voktok Cafe is September 25th. So next Monday. And we'll see you then. Bye, Oops. everybody.